two, three. One. Which reflex picks both my hands up and shifts my weight to my back foot. My arm here, a block on this takes time for me to move my body because your, your body is heavy. But your hands and feet are light. So when he throws the punch, if I can put my hand and foot, I can get to his bicep. I want to do that. I want to get to his bicep before it gets past his shoulder because I have a tremendous superiority. I'm going to put this hand across his head here. His temple, if he's about my height, up under his jaw, if he's real big, the middle of his head, if I can't think of something and I'm in a hurry. Let's put it there. But this is now weak and ineffective. My angle's bad, my distance is bad, my block didn't work. Well, but I hit him. But this is more important right now. This is like, when I'm trying to turn for this, this angle sucks. I don't, I need the distance I can get by extending my shoulder and twisting sideways. This keeps him far away from me, even if he's bigger than me. This comes over the top. So the more I turn though, this way, this way, this way, this way, the less blocking distance I have. Inside instead of the outside. You just happen to be there, you can go up. Two punches. One, two, three. I'm not doing just a jab. One, two, three. One, and I drop my hands. This is two. This is bigger than it has to be. Because all I really want to do is get behind here. But if I don't have people do this, nobody gets it right. Three, I move them across to here. Everybody can see this? Yep. Four, hands come down into here. This is an arm bar. Five, excellent. Some of you, he throws the punch and you're so stiff. It's just, God, it's so hard. Be calm and soft. I got him. My weight's on him. And he can't move. I got weight. I'm not straining to do that. You can feel? There's just a steady, calm feeling to one of my best options. Because my head's wide open. If you got no other choice, well, can I, yeah, then do it. But don't, that's not your primary response. If you coil the kick, something like one, two, would be better. Attacking the limb. This is the worst place in the world for you to be. I could back up, but it gives him more opportunity to continue. So I'm going to slip by that block on the windup and come in and strike. So go slowly, but go one, two, but his arm, I just nailed. It's kind of vibrating. This is coming down. This is coming up into the exposed ribs. It's very painful. Between the two of them, it's squishy. Go one. Take this arm over here. Two, three, four. Five more here. So without him, one, two, three, four. The angles have to change. One, I gotta turn sideways. Two, three. Grab my wrist. I'm gonna re grab it and pull it over here. So here's my hand stack. I got his arm upside down with my elbow on his elbow. It's a measuring device here. This is pulled to my hip. It's teacup and saucer thing. Uh, I have to turn my hip to the side because after he grabs me, he might be trying to hit me. And this turn in and of itself takes that whole arm away. Pick your knee up into here and back fist the head and then shift in and hit the head. Or if your position is different, shift in and hit the body. I could again pick my knee up and then stomp on his leg if his leg is there. I could pick my knee up, stop on his leg, hit this leg with my recoil, come in and hit, you do lots of stuff. Can't side snap the outside of a knee because it moves. You have to thrust it, and you have to thrust it to the ground if you want to do damage. The inside of the knee, you can snap very lightly and do damage. Under stress, uh, you lose your fine motor control. You go, ah, big attack, ah, what you, That little freak out's enough to make you screw up. Can you override that with superior training? Sure, but can you guarantee it every time? No. So instead of precision, where he throws the punch and I'm grabbing this way, I'm grabbing this way, you'll miss that. So both hands just come up and intercept his arm, and you blend on the way down. So he throws the punch, I touch and pull. This has a wide room for error, and it, it, this hand in particular touches, and as it gets to this nice wide neck, it catches. See how he goes like this? So it's gross motor movement, and then you also start to get the refinement for where to hit. But uh, just twist. Please keep your feet together or down close together. Because it's not the same when I try to go, I lose my finesse, my twist. You need this little twist. This is only good for a couple things. And the little turn is one of them. This primary action right here, keep teeth together. Look at his head. See his head whiplash? See his knee turn out? Shock. Well, 
So if it's this and this and this, primary targets, they show up in Kata all the time in ways that you don't know about, but they're in there all the time, including stuff like this. One, two, three. One, two, three. Same three targets all the time. One, two, three. Same three targets. It's in there a lot. So they're worth it. What with this? I can toss them, throw a bunch, and they'll come <laughs> flying down just this part. Maybe, no, I'll keep them down there. So, but that blend you need. And it doesn't matter, right now I'm doing this arm, right? Because it actually is much more forgiving and you get to learn about the fresh points. If he throws with this arm like what we started with, this will pop his elbow and break it. And then you can come back with this. And this is found in many places, most notably the techies. One, two, three. With his right hand, and you're going one, two. If he's taller than you, feel free to come whipping across there. Nothing wrong with it. Hit them. That's one. Move their arm across. Two, three. Hit them again. Four. Somebody punches you in the head right here. Block it. One, two. Grab their arm. Pull it in. One, two, three. Friend takes another swing at you, you catch it. One, two, three. Towards the thumb, striking on the side of the neck. Kick into anything on the lower half that bends them over like this. Drive in, smack them here on the side of the neck. On the first one, I was way early. On the next one, I was way late. But as a theme, what if I came with my feet around so good and I just got a cover and hit them? This is in the kata. You see it? This is early. This is late. This is kind of like, uh-oh, come on, let's stop. So I'm saying this, and this, and this are all the same thing. Mm. The guy's trying to hit you. And I, don't, I might not know right now. And I go, oh, and now, about now, I figure I'm getting hit. So I have to decide what I'm going to do. Am I early enough to go in and smash him? Am I afraid and I'm going, what? Am I in between and I'm just going to chop him? Okay, so as a concept, those are all good. But it's a, a small person, Karn, can knock a guy out by hitting him here. And that's what they say the application to this is in all of the best karate, JKA, Shotokai, everybody says that. So here's the problem with that from a practical standpoint, is it requires some distance for you to skip in there and zap them. And this is an extremely small weapon. This is an extremely small target, and it's one of the most movable places on the whole body. He can move his chin side to side, up and down. He can duck a little bit. You'd miss it. Okay? So to increase my chances of success, I told you guys about the 10, 10, 40, 40 rule. I'll tell you. 10, 10, 40, 40 rule comes from uh, law enforcement. It says when you apply a technique in the street, in real life, 10% of the time you will be exactly on target. 10% of the time you will miss completely. 40% of the time, 10, 10, 40, 40, 40% of the time you'll be off by just a little bit. 40% of the time you'll be off just a little bit to the other side. So the chances of hitting this, 10%, just by that guideline. What can I do to increase my chances of success? I can increase the size of the target, anything from his collarbone to the top of his head. I can increase the size of my weapon, anything from my knuckle to my forearm, so I can make it like this. Or in this particular case, after bending him over a little bit, like this. I could hit with my elbow, my forearm, my wrist, my fist, my outside fist, whatever happens to fit there at that moment. Big target. He can move his head around all his want, his neck stays right there. And I went one, two, three, four, turn, five. That's the whole turn thing. Okay? But it could be if he was behind me and I turned around, there he is, he grabs me. We did this before with Joan, I'll hold hands grab. And so this is not a good way to do it because he's much stronger than I am. So I'm going to use it this way. It bends him over. That's a smack. Peel this out. Kick. It's an excellent technique to use that way. After comes up and either grabs with this hand and spins you and punches, or he grabs with this hand and spins and punches. There's only like you know, a couple choices. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So he comes up and he grabs my shoulder and spins me. My hand comes up because that's in the kata. Now I have this to protect me against that. So we squeeze here, kick, pa, pa, pa. See how weak? Squeeze. Look at pa. This takes time. You have to be very precise. Remember from earlier kata. I think if you do three things in a row, 
it's actually usually four, because you don't know that the first move of the last move is part of your three. Um, it's meant to be the block and the counter. So knife hand blocks, rising blocks, throws the punch, I block and I strike with the same, I don't have any decision, augmented blocks. One, two, no decision. One, two. Come over here, throws the punch. Uh-oh, one, two. We practice that, right, a little bit back there. So it shows up again here as a theme. Then you go one, two. So the first option to me is to go one, two. The second option is to go one, two. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Throw a punch. One, I can be scraping the neck, stabbing the neck, stabbing the eyes, clapping the ears, whiplashing his head. Knee him in the gut. Don't try to get his head down to your knee. That's two. Three is my wind up. Four, strike, finish. One, two, three, four.